Now I'm solving another example from the Navier-Stokes equation in the Cartesian coordinates before I go ahead and solve the cylindrical polar coordinates which will be a little bit more involved mathematically speaking. Okay, so what's going on over here is I have, you can see over here that I have an inclined surface and I have a constant height flow like this. It's a liquid film. It's flowing down over here. Okay. So my goal is to find the velocity profile over here. What will happen? Is it going to be like parabolic like we did before? Is it going to be like that, like boundary layer? So we'll find that out in this particular segment. Let's look at a few uh, observations that I have and limitations and assumptions that I need. One thing is I'm going to call this laminar. Okay. So if I have like a flow like this, okay, this will be my streamline. It's not going to go up and down or in or out of the Board. Let's define my coordinate axis. Can you define your coordinates like this? Because you don't want to think about it. You want to just go ahead and write it the way that we've been writing traditionally. I mean, you can write it and you will get the same answer as the more uh, shortcut version, but I don't like that. Okay. My recommendation to you is to align the flow with one of the coordinate axis. I don't care which one. It can be X, it can be Y, it can be Z. Or it can be theta, it can be r if I'm using cylindrical polar coordinates, okay? So in this case, you're doing yourself, a, actually you're making your life harder by having this type of coordinate axis. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to write it this way. This will be my x, this will be my y. Can, you, can I do it? Why not? Obviously z is into the screen for this particular case. It's my choice to pick the coordinate axis, okay? So I'm making my life easier that way. If laminar, so now my u will be not equal to 0, but then my v it will be 0 and w will be 0 as well. And I'm going to assume that this is 2d, right? Just like I did in the Poiseuil flow, as was the combined quet Poiseuil flow as well. Okay, so it's 2d. So I, I, you know, at this particular plane on the screen versus another plane one meter into the screen, the, the, the behavior is exactly the same, fairly reasonable. So one thing before I go forward also is I want to look at this gravity. Because think about the gravity is this way. But now I'm unlucky from this point of view. So if you align with this, you're good. You can say, you know, I, I, I've been writing minus g, y, j. So right now, let me analyze this before I go forward. Because to me, actually, these, um, you know, kind of focusing on these kind of things help me to answer the question. Because once I write the Navier-Stokes equation, there's a high possibility I will freak out as a student because it's complex, there's a time limitation, etc. Okay? So I'm making my, myself, my life easier this way. So let's look at this then. G, okay. So from trigonometry, you, well, should know this, right? This will be theta. And this component then will be gx. This will be g y right so if i write it then um, g vector will be g times sine theta in the i direction minus g times cosine theta in the basically in the negative j direction as well right so that's what i have okay so this is a good observation after you do this and then i'll, I'll proceed with writing my conservation of mass equation but let's also assume that um, the, as this is a liquid film, this is going to be constant density. So I will be able to write myself the easier version of the conservation of mass, which is this. Del y plus del w del z is equal to zero. And you can see from here and here, the second and the third terms vanish. So I got myself del u del x is equal to zero. And I will also write myself a note that del square u del x square is equal to zero as well. We discussed this in the previous segments. I'm taking a shortcut over here. Okay, the second equation is going to be the Navier-Stokes equation in the direction of the flow. And the direction of the flow is here, so that will be x direction. So I'm going to write my ns, Navier-Stokes, in x direction. So rho del u del t plus u del u del x plus v del u del y plus w del u del z will be equal to minus del p del x plus rho gx plus viscosity times del square u del x square plus del square u del y square 
plus del square u del z square, right? And then I will look at my um, special cases and see what will happen over here. So this will vanish because this is steady, okay? And one thing I, I want to, uh, you know, tell you a shortcut as well. See, what does del u del x is equal to zero means physically? It means that the velocity here is u, the velocity over here is u as well, right? It is not a function of x. It's here, it's u, it's u, 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 u. So what happens to the acceleration if I go in the ax? Acceleration and x direction. It becomes zero. So you can take a shortcut in here and from this logic you can say that, hey, this whole thing is ax, you told me, and I, I will write zero. If not, you can see in here, this is from conservation of mass, v is zero, w is zero. So that's the two alternative methods that I can uh, indicate to you. So del p del x. And I will ask you a question about it, okay? So this is the free surface that I have here. I have pressure over here and pressure over here. Let's say this is P1, this is P2. Is P1, P2, what is the relation between the P1 and P2? Well, if this is free surface, open the atmosphere, then P1 will be equal to P2, will be equal to zero, if I'm using gauge terminology, right? Gauge, gauge. So what does this mean? Is my pressure changing in the extraction in the flow? Nah, it's not changing. So I will simply get rid of that term. Rho gx will not be able to get rid of because it's right over here, actually, g sine theta, right? So this will be g sine theta, del square u del x square is conservation of mass, del square u del z square is from 2d, del square u del y square is exactly what I'm looking for, so I'm not going to eliminate that. Okay, so the left-hand side becomes 0, the right-hand side becomes rho g sine theta, Plus, do not forget the viscosity, students do, del square u, del y square. Okay, so then if I move this, I want to leave alone this del square u, del y square, just like I did in the previous segments. And then what becomes, let's not forget the negative rho g sine theta divided by viscosity, right? That's, yeah, that's all I have. And then, just like I did in the previous segments, take integral ones and then integral of del square u del y square is del u del y right I'm going back in the direction it's going to be minus rho g sine theta divided by viscosity times y plus a constant of c1 why did I constant of c1 not f of xz well I will tell you here's the reason is u a function of x nah Conservation of mass. Is u a function of z? Nah, it's 2d. So u is only a function of y then. So this becomes a regular derivative that we are used to. Okay, that's why it becomes a c1. Okay, then what I'm going to do is take integral once more. And then I get myself u of y is equal to minus rho g sine theta divided by 2 viscosity y squared plus c1y plus c2. This is good. This doesn't look too fancy to me. It's similar to the Poisel flow, except this is different. Let's look at the boundary conditions, and this is where I will see issues if I were to ask this question in the exam. Okay? Okay, everybody will be able to get this. At y is equal to 0, u is equal to 0, right? No slip condition, it's sticking to the surface. This is an inclined surface, so u is equal to zero at y is equal to zero. I got that. What's the second one? Because I have c1 and c2, so I have to obtain two boundary conditions. And typically, for, you know, I'm talking about the mistakes. The th common mistake that I will see is this. Students are gonna tell me that at u is equal to u max at y is equal to h. Well, what kind of a boundary condition is this? Because u max is not given. The boundary condition needs to be something that you know of. Okay? This is not a mistake. Okay? You can actually rephrase this because if the function is maximum there, the derivative, the first derivative with respect to y needs to be zero. So that will be fine. That will give me the right answer that I want. But you can't really take advantage of this. Another alternative, the right answer will be, well, we talked about this in segment 12.1 when I was talking about the boundary conditions is air cannot sustain shear stress and the shear stress needs to be 
continuous at that interface, my shear stress is going to be zero. Okay. So let's write the first one at y is equal to zero, u is equal to zero, at y is equal to h. Two options. If you say u max, then what you're going to get is du dy will be zero. That's the definition of a maximum value from mathematics. Or two second option is you say to me that hey, shear stress is zero because I know as gas of negligible shear stress value. I'm going to just simply go ahead and say they are zero, right? And from here, viscosity times du dy is equal to zero. And you can see either viscosity is zero, which is not. That's the whole point of this module. So du dy is zero. So it's the same thing. Okay. So, okay. So then I have two equations, two unknowns. So let's just do it. Let's use the first one. And I get zero is equal to minus rho g sine theta divided by 2 nu zero square plus c1 times zero plus c2. Well, you see from here that I got my c2 zero, right? Good. Okay, from the second equation, then I need to use the derivative of this function with respect to y, but along the way, I already have it. Okay, you see, I already have it. It's this. So that's what I'm going to write. So I'm going to write zero will be equal to minus rho g sine theta divided by viscosity times h plus c1. So you, you can see from here that c1 needs to be rho g sine theta divided by viscosity times h. Okay, u of y then will be rho g sine theta divided by 2 nu. I'm just taking in parentheses and saving some time for all of us. 2hy minus y square. Okay, so now I can box this up and call it a day.